Hi, welcome back. My name is Mike Herberts, um, playfavorites.com. Um, and I'm going to try and give you an insight to the blues playing of Robert Johnson in this video. Now that would be um, a whole series of videos that could last for a couple of years. But what I, I want to try and do is just break down really what the blues is and how Robert Johnson interpreted it <clears throat> and what he actually did with it that was so unique that we've tried to copy ever since. Um, Blues it revolves around just really the three basic chords, the three chords that became rock and roll, the three chords that became sort of standard ballads. Um, and uh, Robert Johnson played in uh, different keys. The key that he's most uh, commonly associated with is in the key of A, in a standard tuning. Now, if we were to take um, the key of A, we would uh, start off with an A chord. And in a standard blues rock, we'd do... second position A chord F, F sharp G, G sharp A, we lift the pinky off and the next chord we would play would be a D and what the way we'd play that, that's the full D which is an A shape, A, A sharp B, C, C sharp D but we, we can't play all of the strings, we'd put the ring finger down on the fourth uh, string that would give us the second of our chords so, here, and back to the D, and then the A. Now, let's have a look at the chords in a completely different way, which is what Robert Johnson did. If we take this D7 shape up here, for example, and if we move that up the fretboard until we find an A, so we have a D, D sharp E, F, F sharp G, G sharp A, that becomes an A chord. Now, we don't want to hold the full bar down here. What I'm going to do is just hold this fourth string here because we have an open A string there and an open E string here so just by playing this we actually have a full chord and this was Robert Johnson's signature really and what he cleverly did was then move that down to a diminished chord by just moving his fingers down keep the first finger where it is and slide these fingers down and we have a diminished so We can also use this chord slightly, if we keep to these four bottom strings, bottom in terms of gravity, high notes, and uh, use that one and change that to a diminished, we have uh, the basis of some Robert Johnson stuff. And what he usually did was slid into it by picking the third string. And we can hear Robert Johnson in there somewhere, his soul anyway. Um, if we then take another A chord, let's take this shape here. If we looked at this original A, we could, uh, sorry, that, this original A, we could reduce that down to some of its uh, simpler component parts. Now, if we were to take just this bit of the chord here, which is these two strings and this one, we hold effectively what looks like a D shape, moved across, and then move forward to here, um, giving us that, that chord. And again, we have an open A string here, we have an open E here, and an open E here. So that gives us a full A chord still. And that's a neat one, because we can slide that one down, and we can add the pinky in and make that diminish too. So we actually have four positions now. And all of those were used by Robert Johnson um, as an A chord. Um, what else did he get up to? <clears throat> well... The other A shape that we're familiar with is this one up here, which we normally play barred and stretch up here, that was called a long A when I was a, a youngster. And what he used was this famous rundown where he, he would play this chord effectively, use the fifth string as his bass note the first time, and then the fourth string, fifth fret, third fret, uh, fifth fret, sorry, fourth, third, second, and then into the E chord, which would be normally not a full E, but an E7 with the pinky put down, allowing us to do that bluesy E and hammer on. So, um, so they're the basic components of what Robert Johnson did. Something else he did that, that I really like, really unique, was um, the D chord, in fact the D7, Normally you'd expect to play D7, put your thumb over the top, giving you more or less a full D chord. A 
47 chord. Now the way he played it was to use this finger here, but bring his uh, middle finger over and put his ring finger there, giving us this ability to do this. <laughs> In fact, he did some neat tricks where he, instead of uh, sliding up from below, he'd actually come to it from here, giving it a sort of a, I don't know, a sort of a devilish sound. And the other thing you can do is play with the rhythms of that. You can pl uh, pick the two strings there and then add in that one on its own. Or you can do uh, play all three. separates him from uh, most of his contemporaries was he wouldn't play in regular 4-4 bars. He would hang on to a couple of beats in a bar or even play a bar twice. Sometimes he would play a bar at double time, always maintaining that basic rhythm of that blues, uh, the blues 4-4 beat. So if we start to put the components together we can have the makings of a um, of a song. So let's have a look what we've got. We start with this chord here. We're going to pick the third string, remember, and slide into this chord. And the way he would normally start this piece, and this one's based on Kind Hearted Woman Blues, by the way. Um, so we, we would slide it. Like. So I'll get the shape first of all. Now these chords look slightly awkward, but I promise you um, an hour or two of practice and you'll find the most natural, very natural chords to play. Very easy to play. Um, I, I sometimes have my thumb over the top. You will find that quite tricky, but if you put your thumb right behind the neck in the centre there, you find it's very easy to hold down. Some of you may have noticed I'm actually using an electric guitar for this. Um, and the reason for that was because I just thought that I would like to. Um, I do play it mostly on acoustic, I just thought it would make a nice change to play it on the electric guitar. And I wonder what uh, Robert Johnson would have made of modern electronics and uh, the electric guitars. He would have been doing some spectacular things, I'm certain. Okay, so let's have a quick look then at the song. So, uh, the intro, slide up, down, and then this run. So, pinky there, open fifth to start with. Uh, fourth string, fifth, fourth, third, second, and then he would do this little, uh, and then into the E. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Going into the verse, he is this A shape, um, and the way we play is it's sort of a lazy lolloping, like almost like a horse moving along quite slowly. Now that's not exactly how Johnson used to play it. He would have this driving beat with his thumb, and my version is probably more subtle, um, not as profound as his, um, but I just play it this way. So, and uh, we should always play the blues in the way that we feel not do a direct copy. So it goes like this. That shape, then move it down one fret, and then back up, and then down and add the pinky in to make it the diminished. And that's where we'd normally expect to slide back up, but Johnson would stay there for another couple of beats. So that would all go like this. Move 
in two. And uh, there are so many variations of that, but it really is very nice to play. And you put your own variations in there, and occasionally throw in the uh, bring in from not below but, but above. shape we do uh, one uh, one hit really of the A here um, I'll just go into that so it's the chord the fifth which buys us the time to then move back up to the chord um. Starting with the open fifth. Back to the E. So let's just have a look at the whole of that section um, from the beginning. Sliding up with the opening as well. One, two, three, four. Johnson played in this um, is where he moves up here. But I think we'll save that for a future lesson. So I'll just go through one more time each component uh, and let's see if we can turn you into a Robert Johnson aficionado. So Kind Hearted Woman Blues, I'll try and sing a little bit as well just to give you an idea what it sounds like. Uh, sliding up to our shape here. One, two, Four. 